Uh, good morning. We're running a little bit behind today. Uh, technical difficulties. I forgot to turn the test stream off, so, uh, welcome. Hello. Uh, so as you know, we do Saturday mornings a little bit differently. We just like to talk more about things than we do as to actually, come on now. Play anything. Yeah, play anything. Some <laughs> wacky legal action. What if you have multiple personalities? Yes. One of them doesn't so your like chat's going to start appearing above uh, uh, Rory's head this morning because I thought it would be fun to have it on. The... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like a thought bubble. I should put a thought bubble around it. She is the crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nobody's just... actually talking to us. It's all just coming out of we her head. Just, we could just put some poster board up there a thought bubble so i like that That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> as i mentioned we want to talk about the oculus s mm -hmm. uh since laura's looking into getting a um a vr headset and yeah. i can't talk her out of it <laughs> and then um you're not trying to talk me out of it. not very hard <laughs> and then, um, the google state stadia. Yeah, google stadia stadia we also stadia. have the, the nintendo vr he said labo labo which it i guess really isn't VR. No. But it's no. more of a thing you put on your head. That's yeah. VR. <laughs> well, I, it's literally game limited. That there, There's no other extraneous interactions. Mm. Mm. And I know nothing about it. Gotcha. Um, uh, also, I want to preview uh, what we're going to be looking at on Monday because I did a full test yesterday. Unfortunately, one of our television televisions is dead. Hoping I can get that fixed by Monday. But um, that that should be pretty cool. It's uh, five game cubes, four players. How to ruin friendships with Legend of Zelda: The Four Sword. Uh, should be pretty interesting. Uh, again, as I keep telling people, I was a big fan of couch co-op growing up, mm -hmm. and I want to share that experience. And we invite mm -hmm. you to come and sit on the couch and play the game with us. Well, you know, figuratively uh, speaking. I know what, what we need to do for the chat for that. What we need to have a a couch graphic for the chat. <laughs> so though we should I should make us all and then cats. I can um what do you call it and then I can uh oh I should I should work on the betting system so they can gamble on who wins what round we sh I should make us all link cats uh for which link we're gonna but you get a but you get a uh, I'll ha yeah, maybe I'll just I'll just bring over a what color am I gonna be is that me Purple. You are purple. Then I will bring over a purple pillowcase, and then I'll just <laughs> wear it on my <laughs> Close enough, right? <laughs> I actually, if you bring over a purple, purple case, we get to, we get so horror. Uh, I might have to see if I can find one. So see what you can do with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone, bring your pillowcases on Monday so you can wear a link hat. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Good morning to you as well. Good morning. Good morning. Something. Good morning. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I can't you. cut that out of the out of the video. Because I did. Is it um, two lyrics or. One? I don't know how it works. I don't even like. It could be technically. It could, they could get you for melody too. I thought it was just the words. What if you no say, melody. What if you words. say it really out of tune? Yeah. I mean, it won't <laughs> catch it, but yes, they could. Because so many songs are so... Like, even if you pitch shifted, technically they can copy strike it even see, under a pitch no, shift. Th see, that doesn't make sense because so many songs are so close together in uh, rhythm and notes. That's right. Those copyright you for all of them. Though. But, I mean, like, I think we've discussed it in an episode before. Like, I tried to get music rights for yeah. certain songs of this show. Yeah. It is insane. You've got to get performance rights. You've got to get the rights to that <sighs> particular performance, to that particular arrangement to the melody itself, the core mm -hmm. of the song, the lyrics, the actor or or the singer mm -hmm. who who did the performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the singer and the band are a separate entity in rights, depending on on if it you was a was. guest I might, singer. I might have to bring my uh, mini uh, accordion and like one of those we'll make our own small song. keyboard. Yeah, so we just like make little jingles ourselves. Well, you we know? Have, I actually thought about have... reusing all those crap songs, or not crap songs, I enjoyed them. The ones that I wrote all yeah. those years ago. I, I thought about I converting them up. Your Jurassic Park theme. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because uh, that has absolutely none of their intellectual property. The riff, the lyrics, everything is mine. Mm -hmm. I don't even need the lyrics. I don't even think it actually. Good. I don't even think it actually even names the movie. So, <laughs> hmm. 
if I remember the original lyrics, there's there doesn't. So that would be actually pretty interesting. Yeah. But I don't know where a punk song about Jurassic Park would fit in. Well, we could take the lyrics be out. Samuel L. Jackson no. is very topical now. <laughs> <laughs> he is. That's true. So um, with these new VRs and Laura wanting to get a headset, mm-hmm. she was absolutely yeah. insistent on getting a Vive. Um, I was not insistent on well, getting a Vive. She was in the sense that she had a very good and, and apparently very good offer for Vive, which I agree, but, and then... He's going to sell it. It was found out that, um... There's a, there's a couple things there, that need to be fixed There's some things that are wrong with it that'll end up selling. equating to a new If If I want to get it, if I want to get it back working to how it was... Well, what, and I, what, do you, what, what do you want to use it for? Like, what type oh, of games? VR games. Oh, no, games. But what, what type? I don't, uh, just anything. Well, I know there's, like... Uh, if you're talking about the standalone headsets, they won't do what she wants. No, okay. those that they you have, have to have own. a computer with a dedicated graphics card. Okay, but um, I actually thought about getting one just because you can do like apparently there's these modes where you can put on like the I looking at Oculus goes because that would be fun like to maybe do a show with, hmm. especially if we could find a way to capture. Okay, because apparently you can sit, and you sit in VR and you put that thing on and you can like be in an auditorium and your friends can log in with you and you can all watch the same stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I saw that. That'd it's like cool. they did with Netflix originally on the Xbox 360. They had theater mode where your friends on Xbox Live could come and join you in a party and you'd all sit in this little theater, uh, mystery science theater style and you would pick what was on the screen That's and everybody got to watch it. That's but they cut the feature so long ago, but I never got to try it. I really wanted to because it's like, this kind of cool watching TV Can't over the Can't you do something like that with the normal Oculus anyway? Uh, I don't. There are programs, like but it's. Because I could invite when I was looking at the Steam VR, you could like invite friends to your. It 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 really depends. I don't use the Steam VR though. I use the uh, Oculus. But um. Anyway, some of the sensors were dead, and the cost of repairing and fixing everything would put a put her at about the cost of a brand new headset altogether. Um. So what are the um? <clears throat> that's okay. What what are the di- differences between the modern headsets? Because I I'm so in... my headset requires two, at least two tracking sensors. Uh, I'd like to get a third just so I have the whole room layout to use. Mm-hmm. But um, um, brain farts here all day. Um, I had to drill holes. six holes in the wall to put sensors. the mounts up because there's no room for stands in that room where we play there's, VR. There's no room for stands okay. and they have to be angled at a certain... You're supposed to yeah, angle them Yeah, you're supposed to down. angle them down so they're looking down on you. Literally, God's watching. But um, <laughs> but these new ones don't require that. Well, yeah, and Laura, wa- Laura wanting to get one would mean at least six more holes in the wall. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I've already pushed my limit for holes in the wall, I feel. Mm-hmm. I feel there's two things that can be left behind. The other two I'm going to have to patch up. I don't want to do it. But, um, I mean, God forbid we can get rid of that seafoam green on the walls. Uh, that's a bad green. That particular green, I don't know. It's not terrible. It's not great. I don't mind it. <laughs> but um, I think it's claustrophobic since the light isn't bright in that room. Um, But, uh... Oh uh, yeah, that light is dull, and it makes the and that that color just absorbs it. <laughs> so um, anyway, back to topic. The it requires sensors to operate, mm-hmm. and you have to be within their field for it to know where you're at. Okay. And now, if one of your sensors goes dead, then you have to replace it. So the, the guardian system. Well, that we'll get to that in a minute. The 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 way the sensors work versus Oculus versus Vive are different. To actually move in 3D space. With an Oculus Rift, like to actually walk around your room, you need to you should set up your Guardian Trail, which tells the the sensors when when you see or detect any of our our systems getting near this area, put up a barrier in the game that tells you you're close to the wall. Okay. Um. But without the sensors at all, you can't move in virtual space without a controller. You can look around, and that's it. And even then, I'm I'm not even sure it'll work then. You have to have at least one sensor, whereas the the Vive can have one sensor working and still move at a particular angle. But the Vive also has active cameras on it. That uh, there's a safety mode. I don't know how to enable it because I don't have one. Um, that you can actually turn it on so as you get close to objects, 
the the video feed will actively filter those cameras in. So as you approach a wall, it'll fade the game out and your and your wall in, so you can actually see what's going on around you. That's what the so that's what they're they're doing with the Rift S is they're making it to where um, you can see the outside world in black and white. You, you can't do that with the Quest, though, that's coming out. Cause the that Quest, must be new, because they, I didn't see that mm-hmm. in the press release. It's new. Um, they just started announcing stuff for it, because it's coming Yeah, Tuesday, out. I know. It's and it's coming next week. Year. No, it's um, next week. 400 bucks. Yeah, I know. Um, but the, there's, because they have two different headsets coming out. They have the Quest, and they have the Rift S. The Rift S is the newer headset for uh, that's replacing the normal Rift, which is like the PC one, mm-hmm. where it's got instead, like I said, it's I don't got, it's think got a, they're replacing it necessarily. Well, like it's supposed to be like the newer model. Yeah, but it's got a camera on the top apparently to it's help. It's got a camera in the front, two on the bottom, and one on top. I've not seen that camera yet. Yeah, there's one on top too. Um, because I talked to some guy who who worked there. Um, but um, so that's supposed to help out with that, and you're not supposed to need, like the, you're not supposed to need the sensors, which is a good plus mm-hmm. for people with small spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently that's how you set up your sensors is you put the room onto your VR headset and then you trace out where your room is at. That's how you make, make your safety zones. I was curious how, well, I'm really wanting to see how that works because it's weird. Another reason this benefited Laura is her motherboard's older. It's, it's strong enough to do what we want it to, but it's older. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's, it's a processor I've had for over 10 years, it breaks its back but it actually it. is phenomenally mm-hmm. overclockable um but she doesn't have enough usb 3.0 ports for for an oculus rift original so this came out in an opportune time to be like hey uh no things but what what concerns me is that it actually recommends sensors on the website does it yeah because i was looking at the uh required specs and for the minimum you need one usb 3.0 but recommended is three and i was like well, the only reason you would need any other connections would be if you were adding sensors at that point. Which the only thing I can think of is sensors would add a lot of accuracies to its tracking and increase the safety measures. But I, but I mean, what's the point of advertising it as sensorless if your recommended <laughs> setup is with sensors? I wonder if now I, they I could share let sensors. me clarify. I am deriving this. It doesn't outright say sensors, but. It seems weird to go from one USB 3.0 to three without have, any apparent reason. I wonder if they have like a smaller sensor. There actually are some downsides to it, I've read, too, that, that were not announced like publicly. Mm-hmm. I, they were just kind of in interviews. Is that instead of being two individual screens like the originals, it's now an LCD, not an OLED. So it's not organic LED, it's backlit LCD. I think that they And have... it is an entire strip that pans the entire front of the device, mm-hmm. as opposed to each, I get each you. eye had a screen in the original. I think now, though, it's got a wider view, though. I wonder, I wonder if there'll be less strain in the eye if it's one image. It was either, oh, it's be so it was either the... I can't remember which one Organic said. LEDs do better blacks and color saturations. It was either the Rift or... It was either the S or the Quest, but one of them has like different cam- like different screens to give you a more of like immersive feel. No, I mean No, no, one of them does. I just don't remember which one. They both will have different screens if I if yes, the Quest is- one of them's got like screens on the side so that way you get more of a mm, like around your the peripheral. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea any I don't know anything about the Quest. I'm just talking about the S. The S actually has an expanded size and screen. Uh, resolution so that it doesn't have I've not experienced it but apparently there's a bleed that sits right here between the eyes that some people experience where you can see into the void and uh, that this is supposed to eliminate it technically the resolution goes up but the frame rate goes down from 90 to 80 and 90 is supposed to be like the ideal experience Um, and the pixel density is down so it seems like there are some cuts to get it there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know that anybody who doesn't keep up with this stuff will notice. It's like buying a high-end monitor and giving it to somebody who's going to play Peggle. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah, does it? Does that unicorn look nice? Yeah, yeah, it does, but... Are you really going to notice? Yeah, and I think in Laura's case, it, it just works out so we don't have our sensors because I wonder if 
the sensors would interfere with each other if they were both broadcasting. I'm, I'm curious because it looks like the way the sensors are done on the Vive is a little bit different as opposed to the way they're done on the Rift, which is, I think, straight IR. I wonder if the field with the IR fields would inter interfere with each other. We could test it. I mean, if you want to try an original Vive, but that would be up to you. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. They're, they're moving so quickly into the um, virtual space without sensors. I really am interested to see what safety features there are. I mean, I'd love to try the Vive Pro, too, because that would be mm -hmm. pretty cool. With, I mean, that's... Like, that's a lot. When it launched, it was like 800 bucks for just the headset, nothing else. That doesn't include the... You need sensors. Yeah, you, you didn't need your... It didn't have sensors. It didn't have the hub. It, I mean... They even have the controllers? No, it was literally just the headset, the Vive Pro. So it was literally an upgrade package for your Vive, and then you had a extra headset to sit around. Um, so that I don't know that that that's VR. I I'd say if you got the money and you got a computer and do it, it's pretty yeah. neat to see. But if if you're wanting to test the waters, go somewhere that has a demo and try it for yourself first. Well, you may have, not like they it. They also have facilities where they have. Pre planned games and everything. And, and you that you can a, test them out, right? You can go to bigger I don't know. cities and they uh, have. Demos yeah, Best Buy's will have demos. Well, I'm not. Bigger, I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm talking like they have like courses. Like, oh, like build, that's bring, like, play, a like, different thing, though. Like, that's not those that. are proprietary programs. You won't be able to play those at home. I know, but I'm saying you can test uh, to see if you like VR. You can go to places like that and test out how, the, how it functions. I don't know. Uh, it, I you could definitely see how your eyes do with it. Yeah, yeah. But like that's such a like that's such a, like that brings to mind the Pokemon game that I envisioned as a kid was to combine Kids World and a VR headset. Mm, okay. And you actually run around through the fields in VR, yeah. but you're in a playground. Yeah. And you're catching Pokemon, you can see other people, and you have to climb up mountains and run up hills. That'd be cool. And all of it's in VR all except the kids start running into each other. Well, you can see each other. That's a, they're still gonna run into each other. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's, those okay, are, yeah, those they're are, kids. Those are, okay, those are big, expensive headsets to be have. They kids put them on roller coasters now. I guess you could put bump like. I guess you yeah. could put like rubber bumpers. On that, that's a new thing. That's another thing that they're doing with VR too. You can do it at Bush Gardens. They put them on one of the roller coasters. Really? Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, so about you that. ride your roller coaster instead of just enjoying the thrill of the roller coaster because that's not enough anymore. They got to put you in a VR world that interacts with you in a in in that you're watching a movie, like uh, one of them is escaping a dragon. I mean, the theming is cool. I get it, but like if that crap goes down or it gets off track with the ride, that would be nauseating. If if it was like um I Don't play Minecraft in VR. Oh yeah, that Oh no, it's fun. Yeah, that was kinda Did you try I did let you try, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, oh my god, it's, it's awful. Fun. It was alright in the beginning, but then after a while I was just like, okay. This is nauseating. <laughs> No, but the I think the only thing I don't like is like looking over cliffs. Since oh. like that, that, <laughs> that, <laughs> I don't like doing that. But with roller coasters and VR, I could see that really working if they have an indoor coaster and then they have like a seasonal thing where oh no, they put it on the outdoor coasters. Like no, see, I think it'd be better on indoor because then they could customize it seasonally and have like a new experience ever so often. I mean, they all they and, have to do is change up the video. Exactly. But that's what they do with the new one. Or on the outdoor ones, I, like they're, pe I don't know, they've done something to coat them to make them tougher, mm -hmm. and then like there's even an option. They're like some of the rows are VR, some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. It's very weird what's going on with VR right now. I, I would, I am actually more curious to see Hololens enter the fray personally. Yeah. But Hololens is a topic for another time. That's augmented reality, and I think it's going to mm -hmm. be the better thing, you know. But um, mm -hmm. so as far as uh. Google Stadia. Okay. So Google looks to shake up the gaming market with a streaming service mm -hmm. where you pay them a fee and you get access to a custom built uh, PC oh. of sorts. It's a powerhouse and you can stream it to any system you want. So it's going to be a console that you get? No, it's not, no, a, it's console. not a console. You it's... can stream it to anything. If you can get YouTube, you can get Stadia. If you can get Google Chrome. No, YouTube. No, they were saying Google Chrome. It... On the initial outset, it will be Chrome books. Uh, Chrome. It said anything that could run Google Chrome would be a little room to okay. do it. That's my point, if you have access to YouTube. But okay. it's so... going to be start out on Google devices. Okay. 
Um, so there isn't going to be like a like a fire stick type of thing that you have to have. You can just like type in your account. It's a subscription yes. So you have to have Wi Fi and account and the controller, and you're good like to go. Netflix. Yep. Okay, that's cool. I got it. I and guess. Here's, here's the thing, though: is a lot of people were worried that their own connection, because they were like promising so many so much speed and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's well, like depending on where you're at. Apparently, if you get you're if using, you can get Google or if you can get YouTube, you can get Stadia. Yes, but how the way they phrased the, it was literally: if you get a good experience on YouTube, you'll get a great experience on Stadia. Mm, I'm skeptical. Oh yeah, I mean, especially <laughs> with up. Well, I guess you don't need a lot of upload speeds because all you're sending are controller inputs. As long as you can get latency down, that's what's ma- that's what matters. Um, uh, do we know where these games are coming from? Like a Steam. Uh, Google is actually building its own. So you have to buy them. But you have to buy them. Through, I don't know if it's from the developer or through Google. The only thing that I Thanks don't like is, Google. see, I'm okay with digital games because I there are always hackers that come with a way to devise a way to pull them off and back them up after the service is ended. Yeah. So digital games don't scare me near as much as they used to. But the idea of buying a game for a service that can end, and literally you don't buy a copy that you download. You buy a copy it stays to on that. their system. That bothers me. It's like on live all those years ago, the streaming service like in 2007, 2008. I bought Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 for it. You would stream a high end PC and you got a little thing that looked like a wedge you'd set on your TV and you could play your games through it. I don't own that copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, though I paid full retail for it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, but so if the, they if, didn't send me a download of it when the service went down yeah, to they, say, here's your game. If the service stops, you're you're just out of luck. You've literally paid for those games. So I got to wonder, is it going to be, because they've not really announced much, is it going to be a subscription model like the Xbox Game Pass for where the Game Pass is 10 bucks a month, you get access to any games available on it, similar to like a Netflix kind of thing? Or like, so is this a flat rate? And how does that work? How does that get developers any money? I mean, I understand you got like forty dollars coming in every every month, but if you're splitting forty dollars between all these different developers, that that doesn't go a long way, even with millions no. of people. I don't. I, I no. if I remember correctly, I think I read that you still have to pay for the game. I don't know. They've not really announced anything about pricing details. So have they announced any type like what games they're looking to have? On uh, there? last year oh. they did a beta. Are they all originals? No, last year they did a beta with the new Assassin's Creed. Yeah, the Odyssey. I mean, they say what you want about the game itself. The graphics were actually very pretty. And, and the frame rate or whatever. Was. I don't know. Oh, on that, it'll be fine. Okay. Uh, I mean, if they're as powerful as they say they are, it should be fine. But okay. but everyone's like, this is going to shake up the gaming <laughs> market. It's like, I think that in a way it's actually stealing from the gamer. And I don't mean stealing in a in a... Somebody's robbing me at at gunpoint at, yeah. at threat of violence. I mean, they're stealing in a sense that they're 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 taking control away from the consumer. What happens to mods? It, it, here's like, the thing: as I I honestly don't think it's gonna take off like they wanted to. I think I think people, it will. I don't think it will. Fortnite is proof that a free if they can get a free killer free to play game well, on it, it'll take off. There's probably gonna be you have to pay for the service though. There's probably gonna have to be room for both people who. Like, there will be certain games that people will, will have this subscription yeah. service for s- specific mm-hmm. games, but then they'll have, like, their other gaming that is more um, uh, so analog pe- people, that they want to have. People are worried that it's going to kill the, the whole... Consoles. The whole I console. don't think so. It's not, I don't believe it's going to. There's no I mean, way... Particularly, I don't... Sitting down at your, with your console is not going to yeah. always be the better option. Um. And Yeah, and, and it's... I don't know. And Microsoft is excited about it, too, in their own way, because Microsoft is actually doing the same thing already. The difference is Microsoft is offering Cloud X, which is going to stream the game to you, and it's going to go to as many devices as they can get it on. But beyond that, you can buy a cheapo Xbox that'll be acting as a stream box for the service, or you can buy a full, powerful Xbox that runs the games locally. You download them, you play them, or you buy a disc, you play it. And I think having that middle ground, I mean, eventually it's gonna, everything's going to go all digital and it's going to end exist on the back end in the cloud. I really, which... really hate that idea. I really, I really do. Like, I hate that there are so many, like, I like the convenience of digital games. I really do. 
I just don't like the idea of everything. You could lose it. That everything's going digital and that there's a yeah. there's a chance that if they decide to end the service, well, there goes and that prices there goes your money. Poof. And that prices aren't reflecting the difference in delivery system. Like mm-hmm. for instance, uh, studios. I don't know. I'd have to do more research, but I don't think studios host the games that download to Steam. I think they give them to the Steam, and Steam sends it to the user from a master system. Um, if that is the case, then why are the games still sixty dollars at digital? See, that's the other. That thing. is a high. I mean, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be. Developers should set their own prices. I agree with the pricing model in Japan that games can be anywhere between twenty dollars to a hundred dollars oh, yeah, for a new get, game. They get crazy because Japan. because they decide that this is the amount of work we put into it. This is what we want to get out of it, and I'm okay with that. But we have a fixed price system here in this in the states. Uh, and, and in a lot of places. So you'll have some fluctuation with like collector's editions, but in Japan, mm-hmm. you could get a standard edition that's $90. Um, uh, but, what, but what that means to me is if Google's going to be holding it on their drives, there's no reason that I should be paying $60. Mm-hmm. If, if it is no... Okay, let me, let me track that back. They don't owe me anything. I don't... I I wouldn't like to pay sixty dollars unless there's a way I can buy a physical copy and use that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to pay sixty dollars because if I'm paying sixty dollars, I'm paying for the packaging, any artwork. God forbid a a, a manual maybe. Um, the but, option to play it whenever you want. Yeah, further and, on down the road, whenever the service is gone. <laughs> I mean, where <laughs> where my, where has thing. the value has shifted? Mm-hmm. I can pay sixty dollars for a digital copy now, and I, can get, and I'm kind of like, oh, okay, annoying, but at least I can play it offline. Uh, whereas with Stadia, you don't have no internet, you don't have no game, so I don't know that I feel comfortable paying full price for that. You know, on top of a subscription yeah. fee that you're already paying. Yeah, that's the thing is that you're also paying a, and they don't, they haven't announced how much that subscription fee is going to be. I mean, if they're maintaining these powerhouses that are, you know, streaming these games to these servers, like, that's not probably not cheap. They also don't talk about the um, fact of how the servers are split up. I mean, is it one five people the one powerful system? Do you get a whole powerful system to yourself? What happens if they get bogged down? Like They haven't talked about any well, of that. What happens if there's so many people that it just can't keep up? But I don't think Google's <laughs> going to have a problem with that with all their data centers. I really don't. Eh. But I'm if more concerned about... prepared for it. They've not... Clar- and, and it's still very early in the game. Let's, let's be fair. But they haven't clarified Anything. what you're going to get out of it other than a gaming experience on the go anywhere you want. And beyond that, I'm skeptical because it's because I want to know what I'm being paid. Like if mm-hmm. you there are streaming services where you pay like a monthly fee of like thirty dollars, and you get access to a PC, a literally they they have a a server blade for you, and that and every so months, every so many months, they swap all the components out for all new hardware. Like you get the newest graphics cards, you get the new the best RAM. And you and I think uh, maybe depending on service, you could possibly even upgrade extras. That's but other. that is your blade in that server. That Though point. everyone gets the same thing, that one is dedicated to you. But Google doesn't say, "Well, you get a system dedicated to you." They just say, "We have these powerful systems." Thirty dollars a month, you could buy your own computer after so long with that service. I'm just talking about it's an option for people. I mean, but that's not Google Stadia. That's that's just that service. Well, I mean, maybe, but that's what I mean. But like, you can't keep rotating your graphics card every year at thirty dollars a month. You don't need to, though. But and eventually, some actually, people you, want to. You could technically at thirty dollars a month if you do the math. Not for the net, not for the highest end. You trade off your old one towards a new one. You could. Depends on how hard you run the thing. Well, I doubt those people are running it that hard. I don't know. I think you can overclock it. I don't know. It just seems because Ob- obviously they're some, making they're making some sort of profit there, off of it. Of so. course, there is a demand. Otherwise, it wouldn't sell. Let's just build your own computers. <laughs> some people just don't want to. 
and it's easy because you don't have to take your computer with you when you go somewhere. It doesn't that you don't have to risk it being stolen. You can go anywhere and access your computer. I understand the convenience factor. Like Steam Link just got a really nice update recently. That thing we were using to play our Steam games on the television. Oh, yeah. Uh you can now use it to stream your PC anywhere. With a new update. Really? So you can take it with you as long as your PC is on at home. You can hook to it through your Steam Link somewhere else in the world. That's My first nice. thoughts are uh, I want to go find somewhere to hide it on campus. All I know, Why? I because I, I remember Cause I, I got like a eighty inch television in one of the rooms with a nice comfy couch. <laughs> I wanted. I was to. gonna go and be like slap a sticker on the door before I close it. Studying. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> For science. <laughs> <laughs> For um, the, all the science. But. <laughs> Yeah, because I've been meaning to try the Steam Link out again because, well, they had it, like, for super sale one day, and I bought mm. one. I tried it once. Yeah, there were five kinda, bucks. Yeah. That's a, that was a killer deal. That I don't care awesome... who you were. They're trying to get rid of them, but for $5, it's not bad at all. Yeah, but, yeah, because they're normally, like, what, 30 <laughs> they, they started at a 50 Gotcha. But they were literally $5. just, they were just <laughs> dying on the shelf, and they were just trying to get rid of them. So they had a humongous sale. I was like, oh, oh, I need... <laughs> I'll spend five dollars to to try it out. Not it wasn't it wasn't bad. It had some lag to it, but it wasn't terrible. But mm. oh yeah, the other thing was too was we're talking about Nintendo and all their indie games that they've got oh, coming out. How yeah. Nintendo is becoming the indie king. It feels like. I just put a browser over you guys' faces oh, for a second. Sorry about that's that. That's rude. Unfortunately, studio mode still has a glitch in Mac mm. where it it doubles the processing power needed mm. to do anything because mm. it renders the videos differently as opposed to putting the same render in two different spots. I don't know. Now, what was this? Nintendo. Is doing what? Becoming the indie king at this point. Oh, yeah. They're becoming shovelware king. They're coming what? Shovelware. Have you ever tried to browse through the the eShop? Yes. It's awful. Yeah, but there's so many titles though now that yeah, you can pick from. I mean Steam's got a lot of titles too. I don't know that it'd pay for all of them. Yeah, but you can take this you can't take Steam with you. I get that. But no, I'm I'm excited. Uh it's nice that they have so much of a variety now. Especially their their new uh, uh partnership with Microsoft. Which I heard that was just a rumor. Uh, they're bringing Cuphead, which is a Microsoft exclusive, to the Switch. Switch. But that doesn't mean that. The That's a well. Start. Here's the thing, though. It's a start. And Xbox Live features are coming to the Switch. It is a it is a start because Cuphead did get announced, so it, it's mm. it's not necessarily a rumor because just just the fact that they're bothering to do something with Microsoft. Or that Microsoft's bothering to do something with them, I guess, is the other is the way to say it. Microsoft but. paid help to pay to, ve to develop that game, and now they're putting it on a competitor system. That nets them. I don't even know, know if they own the studio for Cuphead I don't know. either. They probably own. I'm sure, they own some rights. Yeah. They own, they own something to where no matter where it's at, so they get a little bit. They're of gonna problem, get but some. It's still not a sale on their system or their shop. It's still nice though that the fact but that they're they're willing to partner. Is with Is this Nintendo. just important for uh, live features so that mm -hmm. systems can be hooked together with through games so we can all play together no matter what system you have? Uh, Minecraft's it... a good example. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you log into Xbox Live anytime you do Minecraft okay. online. So I, I can see the benefit to that. Mm -hmm. okay. I see the benefit. It's just, I don't think I ever saw it coming. Like, just the buddy buddiness. I know they were so cutthroat mm -hmm. for a while there. Like, well, I mean, you look at Mar, like look it at was Marvel all, and Fox. It was and, all exclusives. So remember, yeah. like, like they had like the huge exclusive war for the longest time. Like, it's yeah. still they still have exclusives, but for a long time it was like. Every th every game that was coming out was exclusive to certain it systems. Feels like it's becoming uh, it's slowly, Microsoft and Nintendo versus it's, Sony. It's slowly, but it it is slowly with Google the, on the side. <laughs> it's slowly getting to the point though where they're all starting to slowly kind of mesh mm -hmm. a little bit, like they're playing a little bit more friendly. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Sony is still sour or still salty with Nintendo with all that crap with the uh, GameCube or, or no. That's why Sony still. I mean, they with, still with don't the play, like with the PlayStation. They still don't like to play very nice. Yeah, like didn't uh, they just announce that you could finally do some uh, cross play with Minecraft? 
Uh, I don't know about Minecraft. I know that, um, what do you call it? Um, there was some game that they finally said that they were going to bring Rocket League. Yes, Rocket League just got cross-play with the PlayStation. Yeah. Mm. So they, they're finally joining. And it's beta. The, <laughs> they're finally trying to join the party. Well. <laughs> because it was the only, <laughs> it was the only system that I, you couldn't cross-play. Uh, you other... could cross-play with PC. If I ever get you internet. be fair there. If I get internet. That doesn't enough, count. <laughs> I can play with you guys. Yes. Yeah. What, is... uh, what is that? That's going to happen. I don't know why it won't go full screen there. I don't know. What is that, though? Ooh. That is what it's going to be looking like. Is a test, is a mock video that me and Danny were doing while testing. That he is looks, all of it working. He looks so bored. <laughs> he was actually asleep, I think. <laughs> yes, the moderator was helping me get this all set up and more like watching me and then a carrying, really carrying around the hand camera and getting close on the things. So, um,. Yeah. Oh, too bad that our screens aren't where we're sitting. Like, we should be over there. Make but sure they are there. labeled to where we go. I, I set it up for convenience sake. Yeah. Did you change the the positioning or something? I probably can. We should make it. Too. But it's going to take a little time. All you got to do is rotate those three. Now you say that, ones. but... You don't. You can't just rotate that image. That's a, stat a static image. We'll figure something out. I can do it. You just gotta run the wires differently. Um. But yes. So I don't know. I'm curious with all of that. It just seems very interesting. Nintendo is becoming what it seems to be an indie king. They're getting a lot of neat exclusives, and I think indies are where the true creative medium of games is lay well, now. That's Outside of outside of Nintendo and some Microsoft Studios, Honestly, big things like um, just, Call of Duty, things like that, they just for don't games anymore. Like I don't big, care. Big titles, unless it's a Nintendo title, I really don't care as much anymore. So like when they announced Fallout seventy six, like at first I was kind of excited. I'm then, stoked still. And then when it that it would be good when they started getting like Even closer. Yeah, I was like, it's already out. Like yeah, after it started getting closer to it coming out, I I found myself not caring. And then when it came out, it ended up being a huge flop. You know, maybe it was intentionally flopped. That way people would stop asking for multiplayer in the Elder Scrolls. No, they're still going to ask for it. And they're going to be really mad when it comes out. Maybe this was a way to scare them. Like, is this is how they do multiplayer no, th in our games that we love? They're still going to ask for it. They're gluttons for punishment. But I don't know. That's, that's the thing. Is like, Unless it's a Nintendo title or like some of these indie games that are coming out, like I... I don't care as much anymore. There's some really good titles coming out this year that aren't like, aren't that. Like what? I had a list. I don't remember them offhand. Like they're not memorable, but they looked very interesting. Something I would be interested See, in that's, trying. See, that's the thing is, I will. That's but, the other thing is, they're also going to cost me like the main games are all going to cost me sixty dollars. The indie games are like ten well, or twenty, <laughs> and they look way cooler. Anyway, still, I mean, <laughs> you can't. You can say. Uh, Nintendo isn't necessarily the only one that's got anything good coming out, but it's just a matter of... It seems that there are more... Because Nintendo still has that creative spark. Mm -hmm. They still goof around and try different things, whereas many studios they, they don't want to. Safe. Or they want to do a Fortnite, or they want to do... Um, what What's what's another popular one right now? A know. PUBG uh, Battlefield. And, and no no... no Apex. No, no hate on somebody that enjoys those things. They're all fun games, but they're, it's just more of the same. And if that's what you like, by all means, enjoy it. I just, I want something more. And I think that Nintendo tries like, to bring a little bit more every time. I like the goofy games and that Nintendo makes. They're always different. Indie games are where weird, interesting topics really come out. That's the best part. That's why it makes it interesting. I get tired of playing the same game over and over again. I get tired of seeing the same looking characters. I get tired of seeing the same looking world. Like, yeah. oh, look how look how realistic it looks. I, I don't care how realistic it looks. I live in the real world. <laughs> um, I had somebody the other day who said that he would not play Breath of the Wild because he didn't like the style of the graphics. I'm like, if you'd actually play it, like, it is a beautiful game. Like, I mean, I can understand someone not liking it, but it's the same same thing as everyone boycotting the uh, Wind Waker on GameCube. I it's absolutely, cell shading. I love cell shading. I think it gives it so much character. 
It does. I love it, and it fits the it fits the story of the game. I don't know. That's just me personally. I love cell shading. What about you, bud? When they when they came out with Wind Waker and when they came out with Breath of the Wild, I absolutely adore because it looks like a painting. It looks beautiful. I loved it. I don't know. I, I, I honestly prefer those kind of graphics versus them trying to go super realistic with everything. Mm-hmm. I guess you. I'd, I'd rather it be stylized and fit the story and fit the theme and fit how the actual world is meant to be viewed rather than let's make this look exactly like you just went outside. Like if I want to go, if I want to go look out at, at, at a city, I'll just, I'll go outside. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we live in a town, they, so you're they, not going to see a city. They, well, they spend so much time working on the backgrounds that you're literally going to run by, and then the story ends up not being anything. This kind of p- falls back to that topic we were talking about last week, where it, that's all it feels like they're, they're focusing on, is how good can we make the background look. Was that last week? I don't know, it was a couple before, weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't know. What do you think, bud? I, I don't know. I'd prefer the stylized. It, it depends on the game. That's a, it's, I don't mind some of the hyper realism ones, but like I said, it's just it feels like that's all like, they're trying to do. I don't like um, realistic RPG games. It drives me nuts. Like um, Elder Scrolls and all that shit. I'm like, I can't play this. Really? That's why I don't play them. Huh. I, mean, I, I like the like, pixel art RPGs. Those are fun. Yeah. You probably like this new Samurai game that's coming out. It's a... Uh... It takes one hit to kill every character you come across, but at the same time, if they hit you once, you die. Oh, that's and then the... it flashes yeah. you back to the beginning of the level. When oh, you... the yeah. nin- I forget that what it was cool. called. That sounds cool. I forget what it was called. No, what I want now is I want the punishing cruelty of the original NES games, or even just original game system games mm-hmm. that are meant to to screw you over. Uh, but we're running out of time, so I'm gonna get jump into our preview real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Come Monday, we're starting our four sword uh, adventure. We'll, yeah, we'll go with adventure. <laughs> we'll see what it turns into. A murder. Uh, yeah. Uh, A murder. <laughs> one or more of our players may disappear over the course of filming. <laughs> yes, the screen will go black. We'll the take, lights will flash. We'll take pets. Somebody will be it, missing. We'll, a murder take pets mis- on we'll have a murder <laughs> mystery. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I really think we should add a betting pool because there's a system within Steam Streamlabs that allows me to add a betting pool so people can accumulate points doing things in chat. That's funny. And then they can bet on characters and they can it's bet not, which one of us wins the round. It's not monetary though, right? No, no, no. It's, it's okay, just right. it's an in, it's an just internal point system in the stream. Okay, yeah, I'm cool with that then. I think it would be funny and they'd be yeah. like, I bet on this guy <laughs> to win. Yeah, I'm down for that. So, let's bring it up. Uh, where is it? This, don't mind the quality <laughs> or our sleeping moderator. <laughs> um, he looks like and he I'm going to go ahead and mute it because uh, I'm not sure what we're saying at that point, and I don't necessarily want to spoil anything or say anything I wouldn't necessarily say on stream. Uh, so, But what it is is we've got all five GameCubes hooked up at once, running at once. I know it sounds crazy, but only... <laughs> One item will actually come through sound wise. One of one of the Game Boys, mm-hmm. so that you're not being bombarded with an insane amount of sound. And then we've got our primary game being captured and played, and you guys will hear that, of course. So you can see us actively playing together. Each of us has one screen in front of us while simultaneously being captured here. And we're just gonna play through it. I wonder if this is actually me and Danny playing through it or if it's just me messing around with it. I don't know. I'm trying to get the aspect ratio <laughs> fixed so we can get that 4 by 3 but I'm having a little trouble with it. So so we may have a few streams where it's going to be 16 by 9 so don't 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 uh don't wig out, don't burn your house down. It'll be okay. Um and children honestly <laughs> that's not something to get your panties in a wad over. Is the resolution oh, it, doesn't oh, match the original. It bugs the hell out of me. What? Like because they're they're much heavier set than they are than they should be, they should be tall twigs. Tall twigs. It looks. No, it does look fine. I, I looks... understand that, but it doesn't look how it's meant to. Okay. That's my beef. You purist. Yeah. Why? That's right. <laughs> that's what. That's why I actually. That's why I bought a a plugin that would actually allow us, if we so chose, mm-hmm. to. 
play component on the television. Okay. We could if we wanted. Will I? Probably not. Because I'd rather use my CRTV, my CRT oh my over there. It's so big and bulky. A 16 by 9 CRTV. I found it for $15 <laughs> at a local thrift shop. You can suck it, Trebek. That it's was really heavy. Awesome. It's 140 pounds of awesomeness. <laughs> it's a really heavy TV. I tried to like slightly move it so the, the guy could spray us the other day. I was like, I couldn't budge it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I it's would like, not oh. recommend doing a one-man lift with that television. Ever. Oh, I was just trying to scoot it. It is still. I didn't want to. Actually, was very afraid that the box <laughs> I bought to put it on top of would collapse. Because like all the it's really heavy. It, imagine no TV stand this, in, these days is built to hold a hundred and forty pound television. No, you have to get a cabinet. <laughs> can you imagine? Need a brick. Yep. Can you imagine just like somebody buying one of those and not really thinking about it and just setting it down and <laughs> just collapsing on everything be below it? All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little 1 minute 36 just preview of what it's going to look like. There will be more action going on in the camera. Again, ignore our sleeping camp. Uh, he woke extra. up. Oh, did he? Yeah, he was oh, awake. look at that. All right. Well. But you guys have a good day. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. See you Monday. Follow us if you want to see more. Our YouTube is actually starting to become active. I am uploading videos now. I'm just having to deal with copy strikes, so it's going a little <laughs> slow. So... Everybody have a good day. Uh, thanks for joining Bye. us. See y'all. Peace out.